There are quite a few other higher order methods that are available for collections, and we'll go looking at those in alphabetical order. So we talked about filter and the fact that filter takes a predicate. Another method that takes a predicate that basically it can't do anything that filter can't do, but it can potentially do it more efficiently, is count. So instead of getting all the even elements, I just want to know how many even elements there were. I can pass in a function for finding things that are even, and that tells me that there are three even values in that collection. We saw the drop method, which just drops a certain number of elements. You can also do a drop while. So let's do this, a dot drop while. I wanna drop everything before the nine. So drop while underscore less than nine. And that goes through, and in this case, drops the first two elements. If I had done a drop while greater than one, it would have dropped all the way down to the one there. From math, you might be familiar with the uh, expression that you have a set and you're asking if things exist in it. We can do the same thing here. Is there a multiple of five in our collection? Okay, five is kind of boring. Is there a multiple of seven in our collection? So underscore modulo seven is zero. Answer there is false. Is there a multiple of four in our collection? The answer is true. Filter has a companion called filter not. <clears throat> there is really no situation where you have to use filter not. That filtered for odds. If I call filter not, then it filters for evens. You could always use a regular filter and put an exclamation point for the Boolean not around the expression, uh, but filter not is just an alternate way of, of saying it that might be easier to read in certain situations. Another method is called flat map. Now flat map is closely related to map, um, but it's a bit different. Okay, so to, to illustrate flat map, the thing about flat map is with the function that you pass in needs to produce its own collection. So map, we were able to make use functions that did basically anything we wanted. So for example, I could map and just square the value or I could make strings or whatever. What happens if I take this with map and I use a function that's going to make another collection? Okay, so something like array.fill of in elements with the value in. Okay. Note that this produces an array of arrays, and that's kind of what we would expect. We've taken each integer inside the original array, and we've converted it into a full array of integers. And so we have five fives in one array, followed by two twos in another array, followed by nine nines in another array, array etc. What if I wanted all of those together? I didn't want them to be separate collections. Well, that's where flat map comes into play. And then instead of getting an array of arrays with these values, it's just put all the separate arrays together and given us one large collection with all those values. Kind of the opposite of exists is for all. So instead of just checking does one thing exist, we're gonna say is something true for all of them. So a dot for all. let's say underscore less than 10, which is true because all my values in A are less than 10. Underscore less than seven is false because they are not all less than false. Another method that can be quite handy and that you might use a bit more than, than many of these others is for each. For each goes through every element and just applies a function to it and doesn't give you anything back. Okay, for each is used for side effects. A common thing that you'll see done with for each is you just take a collection and you for each print line because print line has a side effect and it goes out and prints everything. It didn't give us back any value. It just does something for each of the contents of the array or list. We looked earlier at index of. 
So we can get back the value or the index where a particular value is located. It's also possible to find the index where some predicate is satisfied. And that to do that, we use index where. So if I want to find the first in the for index of the first even value, I could say something like that, okay, which happens to be at index one, it skips over the five. What if I wanted the first multiple of three? Well, that would be the nine at index two. Okay. So index where is kind of like a more powerful index of because we can pass in a function. Obviously, I could do exactly what index of does by saying if I wanted to look for the element, say eight, I could say underscore equals eight, and that does the same thing as an index of eight. Just like there's a last index of, we can call a last index where. Now, even with unique values, these can be more interesting. Instead of, instead of finding the first multiple of three, I can find the last multiple of three, which is at index six, because the six here at the end is a multiple of three. We looked at filter and filter not. There's a closely related method called partition. And you use partition when you want both the things that satisfy a predicate and the things that don't. So for example, if we wanted to get the even numbers and the odd numbers out of a collection, I could do a partition on even. And this gives me back a tuple, a tuple of two arrays. And remember, all of these methods could be called with lists, where the first array is the things that satisfied the predicate, and the second array is the things that didn't satisfy the predicate. So using this and giving it a name, I could do something like that, and then I would have a variable for the evens and a variable for the odds. Our last method is kind of a partner to drop while, and that is take while. So if I want to get all of the values at the beginning of a collection that satisfy some predicate. So how about things that are not multiples of three? Underscore modulo three is not equal to zero. Then I just get the five and the two at the beginning. So drop while removes everything that's from the beginning that satisfies a predicate. Take while gives you back a new collection that satisfies everything at the beginning that takes a certain predicate.